Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to watch. I am a very happy man. I just got some new stuff for the bike. I just installed the brand new Custom Dynamics Pro Beam Halo Fog Lights on my 2017 Harley Davidson Street Glide Special. I'm gonna walk you through the install and then I'm gonna take you on the road and show you how it looks. You ready? This is what comes in the package for the fog lamps. You get the two Pro Beam LED lamps, the wiring harness, some cleaning stuff, and 10 chrome and 10 black wire ties. This light fits many models from Harley Davidson, so check out the website to see if your bike is one of them. Before we get into the install, I want to give you some info on these lights as they sit on this grungy towel in my garage. Uh, they have a built in LED halo around the lights. Uh, they're plug and play. You can get them in black or chrome. Obviously, I went with chrome. They have an on and off switch where you choose to mount. You'll see in a bit where I mount mine. Uh, they have short circuit protection, thermal overload protection, and they have IP67 waterproof rating, which basically means water won't get in unless you submerge it more than three feet of water. In other words, they're not going to leak. These Pro Beam Halo fog lights use Cree LEDs that produce a super bright white light. And I like that you can um, use the halo as a running light. Now to install these on your engine guard, you're going to need these. You will need the Pro Beam accessory mounting clamp. As with the halo fog lamps, you can get these in black or chrome. With these lights, you can choose where you want to put them on this engine guard. But Custom Dynamics recommends that you do horizontal mounting instead of vertical. You could do vertical mounting, so like that's my GoPro mount right there. So if you wanted to put it up top, right here, or towards the bottom, you could definitely do that. But you're going to have to change the optics if you decide to do this. I put a video link from Custom Dynamics in the description, and that video is going to walk you through the steps uh, to change out the optics. For this install, I'm mounting it horizontal, so I don't need to change anything. First thing you want to do is take out your clamps and find a location where you want to install. The clamps come with four 3mm Allen head screws and two 2.5mm two Allen set screws and some hex wrenches. So it's really simple to do. All you have to do is take out these two and then this comes apart and then you put it around your uh, engine guard. And then once you're happy with where you want it, you just tighten these down. And then once you finally get it in, then you can put the set screw right over here. And again, all the parts come with this kit, so you're not going to have to find anything. It's all one package. So what this little hole is, is that where, that's where your light's going to hook into. So for the sake of this, to kind of vision it, it's going to look like this, I mean, with the bar. And then the light's going to hook right here. So it's going to be right in this area is where the light's going to be. And I'm really OCD about being level. So unfortunately, because I don't have a motorcycle lift, uh, I have to kind of take measurements because the so bikes at an angle with the kickstand on. So I just took a measurement from here to down on both sides and it should come out pretty level. One cool thing I really like about this product is you have a lot of different options where you want to mount it. I told you earlier about the vertical, I'm doing horizontal, but you can go low or you can go high. This is a good spot for me. I hit my mark pretty well. Hopefully when I do the other side, I'm pretty level. Uh, now what to do is the next step I'm gonna show you is putting the light in. The Halo lighting kit comes with some hardware and you get this mounting stud and you get two washers. So I have two washers here plus a half inch nut. And how this works is you take your light here and on the side of the light you're going to see a hole. So your first thing you want to do is just screw in this mounting stud and then you'll tighten it up in a second. And then you put this through the hole here. And then you put your second washer on right here. And all you're going to need is just a half inch socket uh, to tighten this thing down right here, this locking nut. And I'll tighten this down and make sure as I'm tightening it that, you know, right now it's pretty loose, but once I tighten it up, get it pretty level. So what I'm going to do is uh, tip the bike up just to make it sure it's straight. Because you know, the last thing you want to do is just aiming down or too far up. So you want to make sure it's level. Holy sheep dip, this is a mess. It did not look this way when I started this, but I had to get to the battery. And that's the problem with having too many custom dynamic products. I'm running out of room here. 
Uh, so the next step we have to do is we obviously remove the seat to get to the battery and I actually removed the gas tank too and I'd highly recommend doing that. It's so simple on these bikes. It took me five minutes to do. It's four screws and then a quick disconnect and you're done. And the reason I do that is once I show you guys in a second uh, how I run the wire, um, you have a, it's a lot cleaner install to run it under the tank and you have so much more access with the tank off. But your next step, what you want to do is disconnect the negative terminal. I've already done a couple steps here uh, by taking off all the parts to get to the battery. You take off the negative terminal and then with the harness, which is right here, this big jumbled mess, um, you're going to plug these things in and it's some ports over here. So the first thing, I'm going to put this to the side here real quick, put that down here. You have to take your brake light, which is right here, and then you disconnect it just like that. It's very easy. And I'm going to come back in here and do it proper and I'm just showing this for the sake of understanding how to do this. Uh, on the harness, you've got a male and a female here. So what you do is you plug in the male to the female end from the one you just took off a second ago again. Those just snap in. And then the same thing with the uh, female. Um, then you will tuck those away. And then one thing with the harness that it has, uh, it has this uh, on and off switch. So this is where you have a choice where you can mount it anywhere on the bike or close to the battery. I'm gonna end up putting it on my left side. I wouldn't put it on the right with the throttle. Uh, and then it's an on and off switch. So you just click it and that's gonna turn on the halo and the full light. And so we'll do that at the very end. So all you have to do is when you're running these wires, and I already started one on one of the sides I did, these just plug in. So right here, they snap out and part of the harness right here. And then this is the switch from the light. So all you have to do is plug them in like this on both sides and then tuck everything away and then you're gonna be powered. The biggest challenge, honestly, is running, the, is running the wire through and they give you zip ties and I'll show you a couple things that I did. I'm gonna give you an idea what the wiring looks like. You wanna create a drip loop. And what that is is essentially you're dropping the wire down so in case water gets on, it's gonna drop down and otherwise it could go into the fixture. And then you're gonna run the wire all the way underneath until you get to the close to the gas tank and then they furnish you with the 10 chrome zip ties here and obviously I still got to cut this off and then you tighten these down and you really can't see it that well it's tucked in pretty well down there and I'll show you next what I did with the gas tank one thing with using the gas tank what's cool is see how this pops out right here uh, I could run the wire from here all the way down until I get to the battery so it's a lot cleaner I already started putting a couple zip ties in here just to tighten it up a little bit. And that's essentially it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And then now let me show you what the cleaned up battery looks like, how everything's plugged in. And then we'll uh, see how these things look. This is so much better now that I get it cleaned up. This is how I hooked up the wires under the gas tank. See if you look right here, this piece of plastic, this pops up all the way from the top to the bottom. And all I did is I ran the wire under this plastic and then coming out right here. And on the other side, as I was saying earlier, um, like this piece pops out right here and then you could tuck in the wires and I did a little zip tie work down here just to tighten them up a little bit. So both of them came out right here. And if you look at the little connectors here, this is what they plug into. And there's this one and then there's this one. So you plug the light one into the wiring harness just plug it in and that's how it gets powered. You take the positive lead um, and then you hook it to the positive side of the battery and that's it. So the only thing left for me to do is run the on and off switch and let me show you how I'm going to do that. Originally I was going to put the on and off switch right here on the frame but then I started looking at the hardware for the uh, adjustable backrest and so well, that'd be perfect. So what I did is this thing right here just ran it under here by the frame brought it out under and it hooked right to this bracket it's perfect. So all you did is used a little alcohol and then that's got one of those 3M backers on it and just stuck it on there. It holds real good. And there's your on and off switch. It's real convenient because I kind of pseudo set down, obviously I didn't have my seat and it's, I can easily reach it and it's not a problem at all. I think it's time we take a look at how these all came out. Wow, those came out nice. 
I'm happy we're ended up placing these. The 12 LED halos and the lights is bright, but when you turn on the main lights, you definitely can see a difference. I had to go through and do some fine adjusting on the clamps and the engine guard since it would bother me if they weren't level. And I know Harley makes a similar pair, but they only have a one year warranty on theirs and Custom Dynamics has a lifetime warranty, plus they're actually a little cheaper too. Makes the decision real easy. I'll put all the information about the ProBeam LED halo lights in the clamps in the description. The lights run $379 a pair and the clamp kit is $44.95. Let's go out and take these on the road and see what they look like. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Consider hitting the subscribe and bell notification if you like this type of stuff. I do many motorcycle related things on this channel. I really dig Custom Dynamics and their products. They make high quality stuff and I'm very pleased with these lights. Now get out there and ride everybody. Be well and I'll talk to you guys soon.